Wayne. We are very Incredible blessed. We are very people. blessed. All right. Well, this is a, this is a great moment for us. Uh, we were, we're wanting to spend the next little while talking about the early days of what is now C3 Kiwana Waters, but which was known as Way of the Sea Christian Church. And uh, I was explaining last week to the people how Danielle and I, our history with Graham and Pat Fletcher goes deep and long. And uh, they were heroes of mine and, and ours since we were little kids kids when Patty prayed for both of us in kids ministry to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Both of us about seven years old. And ever since then, uh, our lives have been, were intertwined with theirs. And uh, when they came down to the coast to begin this church, based on a word from God, we're going to hear about it, they began to pioneer a work that God had breathed on, that he'd spoken on. And I look around the room today and I just see so many lives that have been saved, changed, transformed because this couple obeyed God, stepped out in faith, did the hard yards and pioneered. So I want us to stand to our feet and give a really warm welcome to the founders of Seafood Church. Come on up, Pastor Graham and Pastor Fletcher. Come on, if, you, if your life has been touched, if you've been blessed in this church, if you've been saved, if you've been set free, it's because of these guys and their obedience to God that we're here, the breath of God on this house. Our lives, the doors were open for us. So good. So good. We, we just want to say, Graham and Pat, that God's doing such great things in this church, but it never would have happened if it wasn't for you. Uh, we never would be in this role and into our destiny if it wasn't for you. And we want to honor you today. Say a big thank you for what you've done. Come on, give these guys a big clap. Fantastic. 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 Why don't we grab our seats? I think we might need tissues up here, you know, like we're going to get emotional, I think. <laughs> Quite possibly. Oh, hello. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Well, hey, uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, band. You've done a great job. God bless you as you head off. Really, we're, we're going to head a little bit down uh, memory lane together right now, uh, Fletch and Pat. Thank you so much for being here. So pretty much it's almost 25 years and a week or so since the very first service of, of the church, right? Uh, 25 years ago, uh, it was, it, it was the founding scripture, we've just got a couple of things we're going to put up on the screen. So the founding scripture for our church, you're going to put it up, is there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali with contempt, but later on he shall make it glorious, uh, weighty by the, by the way of the sea, which was a highway on the other side of Jordan. Jordan, Galilee of the nations. Next verse, it says this, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a great light has shone. It goes on about the joy of harvest. When you hear that scripture, Fletch, what do you think of? <laughs> oh, man. I think of you guys. <laughs> um, that scripture changed our lives. Um, you know, you had a hall of famous standing up. We're the hall of blame, Patty and I. But... <laughs> That word entered our lives at a critical point of our lives, and we reinvented who we were in the call of God, and it brought us here. It's just um, a fountain of much of what I still do, because right. now we're in Galilee of the nations. Right. So right. that word, that word is the big word of our life. Fantastic. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, in 2000, Graham and Pat moved to Vancouver to plant the first C3 church in Vancouver and pioneered that work and are still there right now. The, the church kicked off. I think there's a little newspaper ad, if we can, if we can flick that up there. Uh, in those days, come celebrate Jesus with us, Way of the Sea. I think we've got even the original logo, the Way of the Sea logo, yes. Christian Center. <laughs> that was it. Now, Fletch is a graphic artist from way back. So back in the day, he did all of the stuff downstairs in the basement yeah. for the church, right? right. That's awesome, awesome days. So good. So good. I love that because that is, um, it came directly out of that scripture, yes, Way of the Sea, and mm -hmm. it was called that for many years. And you moved your family here and you had young kids. We've got a photo of um, you it. at that time. Come on, rocking the beard. <laughs> which is a big deal. And, um, well, both John's parents and my parents were part of the yes. founding members of the church. Oh, right. My mum's here today. Lunch is here. Stand, stand up, up mum. Give us yeah. a wave. Founding member. Stand up. <laughs> <For many> no. 
Awesome. <laughs> Woman of faith. Until they moved away, but um, the, it, uh, the church started, well, in your home, but um, the official service in July 92 was at the Malulaba TAFE College That's it. Um, before you outgrew and moved into the Kiwana Community Centre. Um, tell us about those early days of planning a church. Me? You go on, Pat. Time. Yeah. Okay. I, actually, just looking at photographs, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so hard not to laugh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was, uh, it was an adventure, um, a bit scary for me, you know, moving away from um, a group of people that you'd been with for 20 years right. and then right. launching out on your own and um, with kids as well and they were leaving their friends, right. that was a big deal. Yes. Yes. Um, however, we knew really clearly that it was God. And so the one thing that I just always remember, we would wake up every morning and look at ourselves and think, are we on holiday? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Move to the sunshine yeah, coast. Thank baby. you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so, and, you know, so in actual fact, the um, kids made transitions to school yeah. and all of that thing. And I'd have to say God overshadowed all of that for us. And um, it just became the most amazing journey from there on with wow. the kids, so beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. Fletch, tell us about the Malula Bar TAFE College days. What was that like? <laughs> um, that was, uh, that was a, um, a, quite an event for us to put church into a bar room. Uh, uh -huh. And um, we, we sort of followed suit from that and ended up in taverns and surf clubs after that. But yep. the, TAFE, uh, the TAFE College was a special little season where God began to move um, fairly significantly in a kind of outbreak of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, um, they, you know, I call them the renewal days, um, the river. And uh, in that same time, I was uh, connecting with um, some new mates in the Alexandra board riders yeah. and um, Headlands board riders. And uh, uh, some of them sort of drifted in close to us at that time and yes. came to some of those early yeah. blues nights we yeah. did in the bar room. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so it, it was a... It was the beginning of a kind of a marketplace attitude in the church of yes. reaching into the lost people around yeah. us and befriending them and yeah. uh, hanging with them. So um, it was a special season, that, especially that moving of the spirit stuff. I had to explain a lot to myself <laughs> what's going on here, right. but it was amazing. Right, because on one hand, you've got the Holy Spirit breaking out crazily, That's right. and on the other side, That's you've got guys coming in who've never been to church wanting no. to have a couple of beers while yeah. there's some sort of service yeah. going on. It was yeah. two worlds colliding, yeah. right? Well, one, one guy's wife was lying on the floor and uh, in one of these days, because right in the middle of the service, things would begin to happen. And I saw him appear at the door to pick her up. Right. And um, I, I'd started to become a bit of a mate with him, uh, with the longboarders. And I, I moved over to him and I said, look, uh, um, you know, let me explain what's happening. And he goes, oh, no, I know what's going on. It's all right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I understand. And I thought, well, gee, I don't. I'm trying to look for <laughs> Trying to work it out. That's very cool. It's very cool. I, I have this great memory of the early days because Danielle and I came along really in the first year or so, and of just of the of the church oozing vision. You you were casting vision. I've I've actually still got kitties. These are called OHPs. Okay, <laughs> who remembers the OHPs? Whoa. Come on. Come on. The who who was days. once an overhead projector worker in church? <laughs> so My cool. goodness. Oh, wow. There's a lot of pressure on that job to get it right, facing the right direction, the whole lot. So the, these, these are, uh, down, we, we've got one front. which was like the, the original statement. Just jump back to the other, the other OHP oh, one. Yes. Uh, the, these, are, these are vision statements. I've still got these about the vision that you're casting about our church, that we would be large, That's influential, yes. effective, soul winning, um, you know, revival in style. We've still got these and you you really cast and a lot of the vision that you cast remains in the core and values of our church today it was really a, a strong sense of God putting things into our hearts and putting it into the DNA of our church from the early days and uh, I, I reckon there's about five or six versions of this but they're all yes. awesome they ended up settling with the little way of the sea life raft which is the, the saving of the lost that's pretty cool right that's, well um, oh, there um, it is. That, that's the OHP I was looking for our vision is to be large relevant effective exciting caring and generous and Beautiful. so much of that you'd have to say that's a Being pretty good fulfilled. vision that's a Being pretty bit fulfilled. where we are You're right.
You did well. That's it. Um, we were, you would say our church was birthed in prayer. Yes. Um, many, many prayers were prayed um, from, from the very start, and if not before. Um, tell us what prayers you prayed. What did that look like? We've got the lighthouse prayer. That's very significant in our journey. That's uh, hugely significant and moving. Um, when, I, when we arrived, I would go up every morning, virtually every morning, to, I'm nearly crying, up to, <laughs> up to the lighthouse. And um, the love and the burden of the Lord in my heart for reaching lost people was growing in a very strong way. Awesome. And um, I, would, I loved the lighthouse because I could see Noosa and I could see Caloundra at one oh, point. Right. And I would pray for the length of the coast. I would, I would even go further. I'd go down the cliff in, in, out onto the reef, right out to the far point. Yeah and um, stand there on a low tide. You couldn't do it on a, on a, when the tide was in. I stand there on a low tide, and, but I would pray this prayer, make a way, Lord. Right. We didn't know how to plant a church. We'd been in a movement for 20 years and done major organized plants with sending whole groups and that kind of, but we never knew what it was like for a family to come with a word from God. And that word, he will make it glorious by the way of the sea, right. had that word, the way in it, and Nicklin Way even seemed to oh. shout it at me. And, oh. and, 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 and I'd, stand, I'd stand out there on that reef and I'd say, make a way. Make a way. I saw it in that song, Promises, oh. this, you know. Oh. He has made a way. And I'm thinking, that's it. Make a way. Oh. And uh, Yeah, there it is. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I could rave on, but that's, no, no. That, that was it. Well, we, we ended up having then every, every Tuesday morning that's would be it. an early morning yeah. prayer and people mm. would come and pray and prophesy over the coast. That's right. and, and God's still answering those prayers Absolutely. these years later, I reckon. Yeah. So yeah. into it. Well, Danielle's mum and dad, Blanche and Ray, of course Blanche, hosted it in their home and it was a, a very uh, amazing focal point of prayer and prophecy. John's parents uh, uh, were there, and uh, they, uh, they had been with us in the previous church, so we just, we just had this amazing, committed, intercessory prayer, and others that obviously are here that joined that. But fantastic. Fantastic. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Um, I, I love hearing that. It is. It's very emotional. But out of that, I think, came that... Um, the creative outreaches yes, and to right. do all of the different <laughs> things to attract people yeah. who um, were in darkness to see right. great light and That's the patio, patio churches, churches and awesome. the surf clubs and tell us what you remember about those. I just remember it as loud and fun <laughs> and um, just feeling like, because uh, I, I can remember at one point somebody said, you know, the whole neighbourhood can hear this music uh -huh. and what's going on, uh -huh. which Good. was actually really encouraging. <laughs> it was That's so the cool. Whole idea, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it was all new for us. Yes. And, um, but I think it was just sitting in our hearts for a long time. Yeah. And there it came, and it was all about people. Yes. And uh, as Fergus McIntyre, you know, people matter to God, God <laughs> as Fergus McIntyre would say. Right. Um, but that was our heart. And so this was such an exciting thing of an expression yes. of church, but that was made relevant for people. They were comfortable in coming. Right. We had so many visitors. Yes. Um, it was raucous on some occasions, but just godly at the same time. There was a presence of God in the midst of mayhem. It's it awesome. was incredible. It so it's loved true. it. It's true. So it's pretty much if there was a cafe or a club or a pub, we had a meeting in it pretty That's much in those right. early days. Tell us some of the places we went to. Um, I, I think. Uh, I think. Maybe the first one was at the Bullerong, which doesn't exist the anymore. The Bullerong in Alex's heads. Yeah. Come on. And uh, then there was um, when Marucci Tavern first uh, established, we did yep. one in there as well. The scenes. Um, these guys couldn't believe that I would say, no, please leave the bar open. Right. And uh, they thought church coming in, you know. Uh, they, weren't, they were a bit shy of us. I tried Alex Surf Club. Uh, you know, where I had an, some sort of entree, and they said, no, mate, you can't do that here. We actually did end up doing some blues nights at the, yep. the Alex Club. Yep. But um, Malula, Malula Bar uh, Surf Club, no way. And out of some sort of frustration and praying, I ended up at Kiwana Surf Club, Come which on. was just expanding this yes. little surf club and they had a brand new patio with uh, barbecues around the ring of it and I walked in there and the guy uh, I asked him at the bar, he said, yeah well mate, he says, I go to the Anglican church I'd love to have you in here and I thought, uh -huh. well this is good <laughs> awesome. and he said, on one condition you don't close the bar and, did I, and I had to say to him, did I say close the bar? <laughs> <laughs> but on that first night at, at the Kiwana Surf Club 
uh, I think about half a dozen people from the Alcoholics Anonymous home came awesome. along, and all of them came out the front awesome. and got saved, and some of them quite dramatically have gone on for God and became very befriended by Blanche and helped awesome. along the way. Very Amazing. Good. Yeah. Very good. Um, uh, one of the girls that got saved um, during this time was Miranda. Um, yes, who was Hope. Hope. <laughs> now, Davis, and uh, we've got a little um, video clip of the whole family if we just want to look to the screen. They brought hope and Happy birthday, church! Happy birthday, church! Woo uh, 23 years ago, I was um, saved in our church. Um, I was 15, and wow. it seriously changed my life. I um, made amazing friends, and I found a second family. And Graham and Patty were like spiritual parents to me. I absolutely adored them. And, and they married us. They married us. Andrew and I met in the church. Um, we've had all of our five children in the church. Yay! And we absolutely not, not literally loved in the church. Pleasure. Just <laughs> out in the hospital near the church. Yeah. Uh, we love our church family. Um, 23 years on, we still love everybody and. We have been immensely blessed by being a part of an awesome church. I love our church. It's, it's a great church. It, it's a church that grows. And it, when I first started, there was about 30 to 50 people here. We used to meet at the Mooloolaba TAFE College. Now there's thousands. And uh, I don't know anyone, and it's awesome. Um, yeah, so happy birthday, church. It's been great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That's that's brilliant. Hey, one, one of the things that that we did I, that I remember, Fletch, that you did because you had this such a passion for reaching surfers and young surfers on the coast. You kicked off Surfers Eternal. Tell us about Surfers Eternal. <laughs> well, you know, I had a I had a strange deja vuish thing when I got saved in New Zealand at uh, 16 years old. I had a few years of sort of trying to get there with Jesus, but he got there with me. But in those, in those years, in my passionate young days, surfing and an art student, I had, this, I had this weird kind of dream vision thing that lodged in my mind of running a kind of a church for surfers in a surf club. Now, New Zealand surf clubs were not wow. like here. They were just a hall on the beach, and you didn't go near them unless you were part of the gang. But that was always in my mind. When we got here, that was like a deja vu-ish call. Right. And um, I joined the uh, Longboard Riders Club really just to immerse myself into the community and make friends outside of church. Made some amazing friends, still very close to them to this very day. But in that, we began to just uh, connect with a wider circle through some of these families that, were, that we were connecting with. And we started what we call Surfers Eternal. The idea of it was it was not Christian surfers. The idea of it was that we were going out as Christians with surfers right. and uh, just influencing their lives. And grommets. there was a lot of uh, drugs, there's a lot of mayhem going on in young lives. And one of the things we found is they couldn't fill out their um, Centrelink forms. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually had a little table up at Coffee Club where they would come, and there was a, there was a surf shop right next, next door there, which had, was started by a, one of the greatest legends of Australian surfing and surf journeying. And, and he put me in touch with uh, a lawyer um, who would do it for free, and he would help these guys at the table. Awesome. So th you probably don't even know all of that, awesome. but that was, that was sort of happening a little bit in the background. So we started this thing just connecting with them and doing surf trips, uh, DI, Double Island Point, down to Yamba, uh, all sorts of places. We stayed at Nat, Nat Young's place once, and a whole bunch of them went out one night to a party and got stoned, and we couldn't find them the next day. They didn't come back, and we were terrified of having... That was just the team, having... right? That was just the team. Uh, that was, yeah, yeah, that was just me and my mates, but we couldn't find ourselves. The terrible thing is we had to come home with them, you know, and like, oh, you know. But they anyway, were young that... boys. They were teenagers. Yeah, they were teenagers. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, they were. And their, their parents were kind of hopeful that we might change their lives. So, um... <laughs> 
So we did that very frequently, and uh, I have to say this, a good shout out, he's probably not here today, but, but to Rick Hendricks, who had a bus, who yeah. bought a bus especially for yeah. it, painted down, got the big logo down the side, Surfers Eternal. Awesome. Uh, we, we impinged upon another uh, well-known surf identity here, who had a printing um, outfit to do all our logos and stuff. And awesome. So this thing became quite a feature in the coast, and yeah. there it is. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Yeah. very good, wow. Yeah. Um, We've heard from Miranda. Okay, just you, you talked about this. There was a, a significant moment that has always been referred to of the pulpit falling over. <laughs> Tell that story. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody has their narrative in a moment like that. It depends where you're standing to see it. Not that pulpit, but that's, that, <laughs> that was later. <laughs> but there, there wasn't a lot standing in that meeting by the end of it. And uh, it was an outbreak morning. I've got to say, about a week or so before Blanche... Uh, booms out with the days of congregational prophecy. But, uh, <laughs> Blanche comes out with a prophecy, uh, batten down the hatches, the wind is blowing, turn into the wind. Awesome. Yeah. We awesome. didn't know what that meant, but it sounded really good. <laughs> <laughs> it. On this particular Sunday, we had just ourselves, we were desperate. We, we'd come out of charismatic conservatism and when we're searching for the experiences of God we had had in our youngest and formative days. Right, right. And Ivan Nosworthy was up the road, the pastor yeah. of the COC, and they always seemed to be a little bit further overboard than we were, and so we thought, we're going. We're going to get touched. And we, we talked to Ivan, went up for lunch. I've just got to cut short that bit, but he prayed for us, and we got absolutely done over at his dinner table <laughs> for about two hours on the floor and embarrassingly said to one another, we gotta get out of here and go home <laughs> while we're facing each other on the floor. We came home, but we heard that that day the spirit had broken out at the school and our daughter who had been playing the worship, right. uh, the key keyboards for the worship had fallen off the piano stall <laughs> and the spirit had swept down through the school. Amazing. So God was visiting our home. Yeah. And we came to church that Sunday, we made a little commitment, we're not gonna tell anybody we're not going to let the cat out of the bag. We're just going to see what happens. Right. And on that Sunday morning, you could feel amongst the maybe 50 folks, I don't know whether there'd be that many, but you could feel a pensive sense of God in the meeting. Awesome. Awesome. And um, right at the end of the meeting, I think I may have made a brief testimony of what had happened to us. Yeah. It was actually Pentecost Sunday. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And while I'm talking, I'm watching people sliding down the seats. I'm watching eyes go glazed. Awesome. And I knew something was about to happen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as people started falling, laughing, crying, the spirit breaking out, one of the women came forward, dear Elsa Graham. Uh -huh. I'm afraid her face might have been implanted into the concrete uh -huh. of that bar room because at the point that she came forward, the pulpit flipped. Now, it might have got caught by a cord. We had millions of cords. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't leaning on it, but it was a big iron frame pulpit with, with oak panelling. It was heavy. And when it flipped right next to Elsa, who's lying face forward on the, on the concrete, this thing disemboweled itself. It broke apart and fell. It, it would have been seriously injuring, if not killing. But that just turned it into a full-on rage from there on. We, we got home, and I got this call, and this lady says to me, I was at your meeting. She says, I'm telling everybody I meet that the Spirit has just moved at Way of the Sea. Wow. And everybody, including the pulpit, went down under the power. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so, I mean, since that moment, that opened up significant Absolutely. doors for you traveling Absolutely. the world, Toronto, yeah. That's and right. that was a real key moment right. in the church and, and your ministry, what God That's was doing. That's absolutely do right. John, that was, a, that, Toronto was, I think we were just at the sort of concurrent with them. It was right. just breaking out, and so we hadn't heard about them. Yep. We later heard about them and found somewhere to anchor what was happening with right. us right. Uh, and, and so on. Um, certainly the river was blowing into the COC in a fresh way. Mm. But for some reason, that put me back out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, made connections with Toronto. They made connections with us, and it's off awesome. we went. It's yeah. awesome. Back love to it. Canada. <laughs> uh, I love the hunger, you know, in you guys at the yeah. start. You just wanted more of yeah, God, and it was evident have. in the church, and God yeah. turned up. It was just mm. beautiful. Um, in 
uh, early days, you were an independent church. You planted the church independent. And then in 1994, you were in discussions with Phil Pringle and joining the Christian Simon City McIntyre. Church movement as it was back then. There we go. Um, you had, yeah, Pastor Phil come and preach over a whole five day, five you know, day conference. fire conference. Um, in the community so, centre. Yeah, tell us why C, C3, as we know it now, why why Christian City Church and the connection exactly. with Phil. That, that, it gets, just go back to that sh- shot there. When I think of the community centre days, that's what I think of. <laughs> People <laughs> that's all on the floor. floor. It's messy, long yeah. services. Yeah. Every, every service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, why, why C3? You know, Patty and I had beginnings in this, mm-hmm. in the Jesus movement. That was normal for us, in the Jesus movement. And um, we, it was mainly outside of church, because that wasn't normal in church. Right, right. <laughs> in, in the late 60s, early 70s in New Zealand. But we conservatized and kind of grew up and grew out of something. But when we came here, we were desperate. And we thought those beginnings were better better than where we've ended. Mm -hmm. So we were on a search. And as I plugged around the churches to find home, uh, I went to C3 down in Oxford Falls in those days. I wasn't there. It was at um, DY at Brookvale. And um, we loved it. Patty Patty crawled in behind me in one meeting because all these punk kids we're rocking on really wildly in front of us. And um, she's saying, I don't know about this. You know, it's like, but it was really our re-entry into freedom right. and, and grace. Right. So I, I, I did have a, a, a sandwich in Pastor Phil's office, and there were all these bits of paper stuck around the wall with 10,000 churches with 10,000 or something or a thousand all stuck all over the wall and we talked we laughed we commiserated over our um, journeys and um, and we just felt a joining but the real thing the real thing happened here and that is we started going down in the evenings to Gordon and uh-huh. Joe's uh-huh. church yes. there at yeah. and uh, Sunday nights, mainly because our kids said, can we go to Mr. Moore's church? Oh. And um, we loved it down there. Now, in those days, they had a building which was probably only 10 feet wide, and most of the sound sure. system took up half the building. Sure. And you, we used to sit in front of those speakers, and I had long hair in those days. I just I used to come home with this hair out the back as if I'd been <laughs> riding a motorcycle because of the noise. <laughs> like, brrr, you know. But we loved it. And Gordon and Joe were just incredibly gracious. Wow. Took us... To Very every good. pastor's day, we didn't even join. We sat. They sat us with Pastor Phil. I know they were fishing. Yeah. And they caught us. Yeah. And Very one cool. day I was driving along, and I, I, I got a call from Pastor Phil on the old days of car phones. You know the big clunkers. Yeah. I picked. I picked it up, <laughs> and he goes, "Hey, Flesh, you, you coming on board?" And I went, "Yeah." Yeah, okay. Marvellous, marvellous. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, you talk to Gordon about that and put the phone down. You know? <laughs> yes. Good. Beautiful. It was, no, it was a no-brainer. Rest we were home. History. Uh, yeah. The no rest brainer. is history. Well, speaking of Gordon and Joe, we've got a little greeting from them. Oh, to, really? To have a look at. So let's uh, roll that. Hi, C3 Hi. Church, Kawana Waters. Congratulations. Yes. 25 years. 25 amazing years. Pastor John and Danielle, the board, the leaders, and all the members of the church, you guys are champions. You are. This is a milestone. Oh, yes. We just had to come on and say a huge congratulations and all our love. Yes. We love you guys. And you know what? I remember when Pastor Graham and Patty first went to uh, the Sunshine Coast to start the church, the Way of the Sea, a Christian City Church. And, you know, it's been a phenomenal church. Phenomenal. We just love your church. It's been amazing. And I remember his passion on saving surfers and, and going around to all the beaches yes. and seeing these surfers saved. And you know what? It's grown into an incredible church. And I remember when Pastor John was just a young adult and I think I remember that. Very too. handsome guy. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. Pastor Danielle, she was yeah. actually Discerning. doing yeah. her Discerning. nursing training here in Brisbane. And you know what? She went home every weekend, and we couldn't ever work out why she wanted to go home. But why would now she do that? we know that. Now we know the reason. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I remember in those days too, it was very much a, 
move of the Spirit and yes. at Aspley and we were having prophecies. And mm. one day I, in the meeting I saw Pastor John and I just felt yeah. in my heart God spoke yeah. to me that he was going to be the wow. leader of this church. Yes. And I shared it with Pastor Graham and Patty. And I said, right. if yeah. you ever think of doing something, watch this young guy. He's going to be a great leader. And look today, Pastor oh, John wow. and Daniel, you're awesome leaders. You are. And your church, your influence, your yes. reach, not just around Australia, but all over the world. Exactly. Everywhere I go, don't we? We hear people speaking yes. about you and the great testimony of the church. Yes. And the next 25 years, what will be building on this foundation yeah, exactly. that was laid with by Pastor Graham and Patty yes. and then built upon uh, by Pastor John and Danielle and the team and the next 25 years are going to be incredible. Yeah, yeah. We yes. salute you. We salute we you celebrate today. with you. Have an awesome Have celebration together. Have a wonderful together. day. Isn't that cool? Isn't that I cool? remember the day. He said, really? Watch these guys, they're in your future, you know. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Well, you must have been crazy, because I think we were like 27, 25, and we became the assistant leaders, and, uh, and you were starting to travel around more and more. There we are, our little Bobby, that's little Jackson. Oh, is that Mitchell? There we are, that's Mitchell. Okay, so that must be just after 1999. Yeah. And it was, that's, that's the, the day of our ordination with Mike yes. Connell. Can you believe that? The Kiwana Community Centre. The Kiwana Community mm. Centre. We were June 29 2000. and 27. I still, I still go, what were you thinking? Really, what were you thinking? To, oh, now yeah. that moment, to tell, how, tell that moment. Well, you sent that photo over, right? Yeah. I didn't know this existed, but you tell the story. Well, uh, uh, yeah, that's, the, that's the envelope. I've still got the envelope because I've just wow. had, to, I've had to pull it out just recently for some other... Um, work I'm doing with the Canadian government. <laughs> but it's the, <laughs> that's okay. the day we received our landed immigrants for Canada. The, okay. You brought it over from the mailbox. The visa. Oh, for, you got it, the uh, approval, to, to which residents. was like longed Cause, for, cause, yeah, prayed right? for, for a lot, like it took years, right? Yeah, these guys oh, handed the, years. You handed the church over to us in 2000, yeah. but it took another 12 months yeah. Yeah. before you actually yeah. could go to Canada. That's right. So you were yeah. like travelling around in no man's land with itchy feet waiting to That's go. Right. And, uh, you know, I just want to say in the whole transition, for us, one of the great things, there's so many things, you did open the door for us, but you you gave us room to make mistakes, you gave us room to, to stuff up, if anyone ever, you know, you know, reference to you, you just backed us 100%. And lots of people in a transition don't do that well, but yeah. you did that so well. Thank you so much yeah. for that transition, <laughs> for giving us space. Fantastic. Can I, can I say something to sure. you on that? You know, um, John and Dan made us look good. Mm. <laughs> and there's some people you have to get out of the way for. Cause, you know, and I didn't think of it like that then, but you look back and you go, wow. You know, and uh, you know we know their heritage, and so that was made it a great comfort zone for us. But there was absolutely no doubt there was a fast train coming through, and uh, these two were it. Anything John and Dan did in the church in those days grew. They took on a thing, a young adults group, because we were mainly young adults, by the way, and lots of guys. Right. Most churches were envious of all the men, that, young men that were in our church. You know, they were all the Valley of Girls out there, you know. <laughs> anyway, Assembly of Girls. But I mean, we're just moving on. But, <laughs> but we, we had guys, you know, and this, this couple led the group. And it, they called it BYO, Beyond Youth Options. I think it was a cover for much else, but <laughs> it was amazing. And then when I did start to yield to this pressure to travel and what was happening uh, in our lives, um, I'd come back and the, the church would have grown incrementally or they'd say, people would say, did you hear about so-and-so getting saved or this miracle or this thing happening and coming back to the ministry here? And we just went, oh boy. This is it. And we were offered other people from the movement to take over the church. And uh, at the end of the day, we do. Wow. You Amen. can't walk past the best in the West. No. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the truth. That's the Thank truth. Thank you. Be kind. Yeah. Very cool. Patty, do you want to say any closing comments to the church while we're wrapping up? Well, I can only say how blessed and encouraged and um, 
just amazed actually at what you guys have done. Uh, and as much as this is a, you know, this little portion here is about us for a minute, but you know, um, the history actually lies at their feet now. And it's been amazing. Um, when, you, when you transition, you think, God, we have to leave it in your hands. And these amazing people. I do remember the last meeting we had with all the pastors in Queensland. They were up here in the little whatever that building was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, anyway, but I do remember the last thing I said is just, just, um, just wait and see what this young couple will do because they're the new kids on the block. Welcome them and see what God will do with them. And this is what it is right here. Thank so you. bless you both. Thank you. Thank and don't, don't forget that in all, all your journey, you faithful people, you also planted C3 Vancouver. Yeah, wow. You, you did that. That's awesome. We will just seed out from here. And first church in Canada, C3 Come Church on. in Canada, we now have 10 Come on. in Canada. And Come on. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Love that. Oh, you, you're just pioneers, you know, you paved the way and whether it be here on the coast, you know, we've never planted a church and so we don't know personally firsthand the hard slog that it takes. I mean, we just want to honour you today in, in being obedient to the call of Christ, you know, um, having that scripture and wanting to make a way. All the prayers that you prayed, we're so grateful that you joined C3. Exactly. We can't imagine yeah. what it would be like yeah. if we weren't part of C3. Um, we're just so grateful that you believed in us, yes. um, that you released us. I mean, you know, we've done BYO, Beyond Youth Options, but not much more. We're pretty green, uh -huh. but you saw something in us. We didn't even see it in ourselves, and you released us. And, you know, just for all the prayers that you prayed, all the investment that you've made, it's not just in us, in our church now, but in the future yes. and for generations. So we just want to thank you and honour you for that today. And we've got... Come on, church, why don't we stand up and just thank Graham and Pat. Awesome, Thank you. Very good. Now, we've got a little something I think the guys are going to bring out. And in the little something, it tells you about a little something that didn't quite make it. So it's, you'll, it'll, it's coming your way. It's coming your way. So just some, some little things that we wanted to give you. And uh, that tells you about something that's coming your way that's just a little memento of this weekend. So come on, give these guys a big clap. Thank you so much. Oh, there it was. Awesome. All right. Fantastic, fantastic. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, I love, we talked last week about honour, and the Bible talks about honour where honour is due. And uh, there are so many people part of the long journey in the life of our church. Uh, three that I just really want to honour right now, point out right now and ask to stand uh, is actually Dale Phillips, if you would stand, and Margaret Appleton and Mark Wardlaw. And I'll, I want to tell you why. Each of these three... Um, have served on our church board for in, uh, at a different season for in excess of 10 years. Uh, Margaret still remains on our board right now. But I just want to honour each of you. Uh, we've been through some tight times together. We've prayed a lot together. We believe God for miracles together. And uh, each one of you are, are just, gr you have a, a special place in our heart and a special place in the history of our church. So we want to honour you today. I've got a little, a little gift that I just want to give you. Church, can you thank Dale? and Margaret and Mark for their legendary leadership on the board and all that they've done. We love you guys and your delightful spouses who have been on the journey with us as well, Tanya and Ken and Judy, all legends in our church, and Thank we salute you. you. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Fantastic. Champions, we're surrounded by champions. Um, we also wanted to acknowledge our exec team, yes. of which we are so grateful to have some amazing people that Absolutely. stand alongside us and are our armour bearers. Yes. And just want to make mention of Jeremy Moore, Teresa Delamere. Would you stand up just for a moment, because yes. um, these guys, awesome, Marita, in just guys. a moment, 
Teresa. She's a woman of great capacity. She has so much energy, so much fun, know, um, just know. releases us to do so much. We're so grateful that you came to our church, your gift to us, Teresa, and we want to honour you today yes. for um, being a part of our amazing team. And Jeremy, you are an armour bearer. You carry the it's weight. True. You're dependable. You're solid. Yes. We know that you're always there with a we word of that. prayer for Come us. On. You're always there with a word of encouragement. And um, we're just so grateful that you guys are on our team. And we've got a gift for you as well you from our team. Thank Somebody, you. Yep. Come That's out a little thank and you. Come thank on, put our your hands guys. together for Jeremy and for Teresa. Thank you, guys. We love you heaps. Honor where honor's due. Uh, and then we'd love to invite Russell and Marita up, who are going to join us for the next, uh, the next kind of uh, reminiscing uh, period of time. But when, when uh, Fletch began to travel a lot overseas, and we, we became the local kind of facilitators and leaders of what was happening in the church, and we had a moment of saying, well, you can pick a team of people who can work with you in the local church. And Russell and Marita were our first pick, and we said, we want these guys. They've been in the church for a number of years. That's back in the green building days and uh, and they have journeyed with us uh, pretty that would be 19 years since that moment 17 years since we became the senior pastors Russell served on the board and still on the board for many years uh, he was on the senior leadership team oh, this is Marita when she was the kids church leader with Rebecca and Trini so four years. for four years <laughs> uh, and then Marita has been a, an associate pastor an assistant senior minister the names keep changing now she's on the executive team but really has stood beside us both of them together in all of this journey I'm not sure that we'd actually be here through the times that the, we've laughed together and we've cried together. Uh, we've cleaned up the blood off the floor when necessary uh, and they've been with us the whole journey and we just want to honour you guys today. We love you so much. Thank you for travelling with us. Why don't you stand, put your hands together for C3 Legends. I, I want to say Maria something Smith. as well. Okay, say. <laughs> up, up. I want to say something as well. Um, you know, from the first uh, moment that I had uh, coffee with Marita, uh, I was nine months plus pregnant with my first child. I knew that we were going to be firm friends from that moment onwards. And throughout our journey, these guys have just supported us beyond comprehension. Like, it's, we're talking longevity here over many years of highs and lows, the ups and downs, been there praying for us, supporting for us. We're so grateful. I, I, I echo those. I'm not sure we would be here if it wasn't for you. Every senior pastor needs a Russell and Marita in their life to hold up their arms when they need that prayer. And you guys are amazing. We love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Fantastic. We need tissues. 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 tissues, tissues, tissues Thank you, maybe for our tissues. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Now, well, we're gonna, that. We're going <laughs> yeah, to uh, move into a little more history. But you guys came to the church when? Well, we came in um, two th uh, 1995. 1995, yeah. when we were just on the journey to being a C3 church. That's C3 right. Church. That's what are your early memories? <laughs> Well, our earliest memories were when we, we just returned from uh, C3 at Brookvale after doing four years down there. We graduated our ministry training college and we went and saw Pastor Gordon and Joe Moore in Brisbane and said, is there any C3s on the coast? And they said, well, Graham and Patty Fletcher have just started a, a, awesome. a work called Way of the Sea just go in and plug in. And we came up, we did, and we just loved the vision, the passion, and we just decided we right did, then, 100% yes. all yes. in. Yes, yep. Awesome. So whatever a hand found to do, we would do it. So awesome. you did all the setting up and uh -huh. the packing down and uh -huh. in the community centre. Um, I ran Kids Church for four years, believe it Come or not. <laughs> we went on ministry trips. You know, highlight was going on ministry trips. with. Uh, we were taking the fire to New Zealand awesome. with Fletch. Yeah, awesome. That was incredible. He taught us so much in how to pray in the awesome. spirit. But all that time, you know, we, we became friends with you, but we could see such a calling on your life. I, I'll never forget uh, one time when you got up, the first time we ever heard you preach, right. and uh, we just looked at each other and we went, 
wow, what faith. And we both looked at each other and said, like, it's like a Phil Pringle. Mm. And, uh, and, and, you know, we were just, but we just admired, you know, you're just your journey. And um, no wonder Fletch asked you to be assistant pastors and, and senior ministers. But there and then, during that time, we were like, we just, we feel our calling was just to support you. Awesome. And we've absolutely loved it. You know, you guys are just incredible. So tell me, what was it like uh, in those days right, as right. young, uh -huh. you were so young as senior pastors, tell us what it was we had like. two little kitties, we, we had like a two-year-old and a, a nine-month-old, I Jackson think, when we um, took on the church in 2000. That's, it was like, it was a baptism of fire for us, we, we yeah. really, we, had, we sort of thought it would be the same as what we'd always done, uh, but <laughs> suddenly this spiritual weight hit us from the moment we became the pastors and oh, yeah. we started to cry out to God at a whole yes. new level, no doubt about it. There was, I mean, some, in the first year, Dan's dad passed away suddenly. That was a massive yes. shock. That was like the second funeral that I ever did, well, and it was, yeah. for, it was for Dan's dad. So that was a big moment. And then at the same time, in that, in that first year, Dale Phillips um, got a, a very aggressive form of cancer. And, uh, and we called the church to prayer. And I remember being in a hospital. He, had, had, he was like pale white. Uh, I thought he's going to go. I just went there to read the, the word of God to him. I remember reading the scripture. It said, and then the Lord sent his word and healed him. And we began to cry out in a prayer meeting and just said, come on, God, would you heal him? Yeah. And so the doctor said, three days, three days uh, possibly to live, and then suddenly it just turned as the church. We met upstairs. Those days we didn't have buildings, so anywhere there was somewhere to meet, we would go there and pray. So we'd go to the Kiwana, you know, the sports ovals and a place called Legends, I remember. But this is the bird that we were crying out, God healed Dale Phillips. And uh, here he is, 17 years later, a walking yeah. miracle. Awesome. Very, very cool. That was amazing. Yeah. What a... Um, well, I mean, we're thrown in the deep end, right? So yes, it's sink or were. swim. Yes. So, you know, we just had to... Um, Pretend. Yeah. Just a lot, a lot <laughs> oh, you it till you make it. <laughs> Doggy paddle. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we grew a lot and we had, you know, people like you who were in the deep oh, end as well, you, you yeah. know, yep. never done that sort all of thing before. So we're all learning together and our church grew with us as we, you know, just yeah. grew up and matured, I guess. Yeah. Still going. Yeah. Um, after uh, uh, probably a year, and we would have um, Pastor Chris Pringle come and yeah. speak in our church. She and just, She sort of grew on us. Like, she just came and grew we, on grew, us. we grew on her. <laughs> she just sort of loved our church and really invested yeah. in She was right. very encouraging, mm. very releasing yeah. of us, and just supportive, and was <laughs> celebrating a Jackson birthday. Jackson down the front of the But, birthday. you know, okay. we, um, we had a really significant moment with her in one of our early conversations, and yeah. um, they'd been at Oxford Falls... I think 20 years yep, they yep. um, pioneered and pastored that church, and they, she was telling us they've just decided, you know, just had a God moment where they're recommitting another 20 years of their life to this church, and and asked us, you know, what sort of a commitment do we have to right. this church? And we we're like, oh, I don't know. Well, we're like, thinking maybe until God moves us on right? or whatever, we you might know. Go to Melbourne, plan a church. Yeah, we're we just like, know. no idea. You know, Pat and Graham came; they were here for, you know, eight years. So maybe we'll be here for eight years. I don't know. Move on, and we just really didn't know, but um, she just challenged us. You you know, you need to have a long-term commitment to this church, and we prayed about it. And, yeah, she just said, and you, should, you should make a life commitment to this church. It was I just like, a life commitment. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that. We we want to be here. Yeah. Like, how securing would that be for us yep. and for our church if they know we're not just here one day, gone the next, but um, it was such a defining Absolutely. moment for yeah, us, for defining and as moment. we shared that with our team, Oh yes, Everyone and it was just like, Yes. 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 We're with yes. You. Most people were happy. There was a few like, oh, I thought they were going to leave. <laughs> but most people were pretty happy. <laughs> uh, the Sunday that you actually announced it, there was just a sense of God, even right. as you said it, we're committed. And, you but know, all of life. us guys there were going, yeah, this is, it made it really, really secure. It was awesome. very defining was it, that moment. Really it really yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Secure. That's what yeah. it made the church secure. Yeah. Oh, and we joined you in that. Thank but, John, one of the big miracles that happened first in your senior leadership was getting our permanent 
Our oh, building. Yes. Facility. Our first permanent facilities. The, the, the Remember that? Building. Building. Look at you, Look at those. You. Well, we, we'd walk through the building with, when Fletch was here, when it was just an empty warehouse, and our church had kept hitting this sort of boundary of being able to get a permanent facility. And so we, did, we just felt like God had given us this one down here in Main Drive, and we began to just take steps of faith. We began to pray. We, we'd have all you know, half nights of prayer. That's us uh, oh, yeah. on the other side of the green <laughs> building of Main Drive on, the, on where the lake is looking back. I mean, we must have looked crazy holding hands, yeah. praying. Yes. We would go up and lay hands on the building. We would do all this <laughs> stuff. We just started to take steps of faith. Uh, people would start to wear green to church. We gave, we gave all the scriptures out. Chris Pringle, we, we, gave, yeah, we gave her this green, green, all green. Very green. Chris Pringle yeah. got a green scarf we gave her, and she would wear it and pray yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah, green was, party. It was just like, come on, God. It must have taken about 18 months of prayer, knockbacks, yeah. of going for a rezone for the place before we had it, of taking up a, our first ever big building fund offering was $240,000. Yeah. Maybe there was 200 people in the church for the fit out of the building that we hadn't signed a lease for. That was awesome. It's just, that's what faith does, right? Yeah, and within weeks, it just broke times. open. And, um, Putting up a sign out the front for material change of yeah, use, yeah, even be... though there was a panel beater in it and yeah. he had no intention it's, of moving. Was like, I'm not going to lease, I'm gonna lease so here. I'm not funny. going anywhere. I think that's the... I had a vision of holding up that lease for us, holding yes. it up, and then you and I held it together right. that, you know, this Front moment. This is it. This is the lease. Yes. This is the green building moment. Oh, my gosh. We were so excited. We were so excited. <laughs> yeah. We had a party. I'm not sure if we got a photo of the green building cake. Someone, got the cake. We, someone oh, yeah. made it. There it is. Yeah. The way of the yeah, sea. Even the green, green building. Green. There it is. There. It was like, it was just party. It was, oh, but, that's it, so but cool. it was a ceiling that we kind of broke and, yeah. you know, spiritually in the spirit so cool. realm and lots of people had their own miracles at the same time. It was really cool. Yeah, that's that's so, so true. Good. That's awesome. And uh, I think um, you had Pastor Chris dedicate Gemma and... Oh, yeah, we had a big... Oh, yeah. right, at the yeah. actual yeah. opening. At the opening. At yes. the opening of the um, oh. building, we had Pastor Phil up, and he did a pastor's day in our new building yep. as we um, fitted it out. And then uh, Chris stayed for the weekend and dedicated Gemma. She was two weeks old at that time, so a busy time of life for us, oh, more ways than oh, one. Babe. But um, that was, yeah, um, the building oh, opening. Look at that up. green That's shirt. The, yeah, the green <laughs> shirt. There it is. That's the inside of the building. Yeah, wow. That was so good. Well, I just remember it was a time of explosive growth. Right. We had lots of salvations, yep. but we continued doing the crazy creative outreaches. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about some of them? Yeah. <laughs> well, go, just going back before, you can see in the background, right, we moved in and pretty much began the fit yeah. out while we were there. Yes. So one week there'd be a, some a new light up or there'd be a new wall Ben and I look or... like we're going to fly away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Fletch actually came and preached for us yeah, in the, like, first, the week that we signed it. Our first, yeah, and we had got cars in the background because it still had the panel beater in there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we had a meeting of just like a dedication service. It was we also like, pumped. The band stood in the back of an old EH. Uh, there's a guitarist, in Neil Newman, in the back of an EHU. Yeah. Up the back. Oh, and so yeah. prophesying <laughs> and it was crazy, it was right? Like I love it. Time. I love it. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we did that fit out. And, yeah, we did these oh. creative outreaches, right? Yeah, people came. They just oh, started yes. filling the... That's John was Bob the, the builder. builder. He was wearing a hard hat and preaching. That's like we're building um, the church the and the church. Work both. Belt. Yeah. Look at you, hot. I know. Come on, baby. Hot. There we go. Yeah. We're, we're on a mission from God there. We did the uh, Blues Brothers Blues morning. Brothers. Came in the back of middle, yes. middle of church. Yes. There's Neil and Sue. All dressed up. Yeah. So glad to see so many of you With a snake, I was going to say. With the snake. Face your fears. Oh, Steve Irwin, eat your heart Steve out. Steve Irwin was alive, so you yeah, could dress up as him. Okay. So I was, and Sam brought in this python. He told us later, <laughs> that because we got people to face their fears, and all the kids came up and patted it. And he told us after the service, it wasn't that well. I thought it might bite someone, but we just had to go with it sick. anyway. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Thanks, mate. That's awesome. Uh, Put it gosh. away. Just oh. any, any excuse to give wrong. people a reason to bring someone to church. Just <laughs> crazy stuff. But champion service, that's when we started yes. our champion service and yes. um, inviting um, sports people to come and our boxing ring that we converted our um, auditorium in into a boxing ring and had yes. a bout in mid-service. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Actually, a young a young man went to one of those boxing oh. services and it's our very own Josh. Yeah. And we've got a good story, so have a look up on the screen and we'll have a look at this. When I was 15, I, I came to church for the very first time and I remember the moments 
yeah, walking through, I, I came at a champion service, which is an event where we had a boxing ring and some boxes, and I really just came for that that moment to see the, see the fight. But uh, never been to a church before, and when I came in, it was it was yeah, it was, it was a little bit awkward, and I was like, oh, I've never been to this before. But I remember just life, you know. I remember something in the atmosphere that I. Uh, just couldn't describe and you know it just that started my journey you know I attended church for about three months and then you know it was a Sunday night service I was in about the fourth row I responded and gave my heart to God and I found God here his peace his love for my life I remember I was just so angry I didn't realize I was angry I just remember just God just slowly and surely just bring healing and freedom into my life green building days were so much fun I remember those days um, I remember going to youth on a Friday night, it was called Generate Youth and I remember just having a lot of fun with all the guys and, and uh, really just made friends in church there, friendships that I saw, uh, that I still have friends now 13 years later on, uh, where they're my brothers and I can do life with and uh, I met my wife in this church. I'm just so thankful for the last 13 years in our church and I'm so thankful for where God's taking our church and uh, what the next 13 years look like. Hopefully with a little bit of pitter patter. Hey. Hey. Uh, we're so proud of Josh. Was that, an announcement? Of the house? Was that an announcement, Josh? <laughs> Josh is now one of our pastors. Yeah, He's on our team here. On, he got saved there back in the Boxing Day match. Exactly. I lo love it. That's awesome. it. That's the, the green building. We just yeah. outgrew it so quickly, didn't we, Russ? It was. It was a time of like accelerated growth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people, if you didn't get there on time, yeah, we're at the glass doors yeah. with your nose pressed up trying yeah, to see what was happening. Sitting on the outside, sitting in the foyer. Wasn't it a great time? And so many people who are key people in our church got saved in that, that yep. period of time, gave their life to, to Christ. I remember just in that, in that area, Jake and Christy had, I think Jake and his brother Josh had come to the Kiwana Community Centre. Uh, Josh had black fingernails and a dog collar, and they were just pretty much looking for the food, which was the theme of their life for the next five years, I reckon. <laughs> looking for the food, joining the hospitality kept coming team. to the welcome lunch yeah. about five How, times. Yeah, Jake came to our welcome to church <laughs> lunch five times. He never signed up. He just wanted the free lunch. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> and Christy, you got in the, in the community centre when Fergus McIntyre visited and have gone on to be a great couple in our church, pioneered Coolum for us, which was, yeah. which I think was breaking ground that we're going to benefit from years for. Stand up, Jake and Christy. Go on, give these guys a big clap. We love you guys. You're awesome. Well, give us a wave if you came to church in those green building yeah, days. On. Who's a green building person? Yes. Yep, yeah. What Remember about the community days? centre? Who was here in the community? Which counted as about 35 people still awesome. in our church from the community centre Kids days. Grown Fantastic. Up. Wardlaw's, Bowman's, all sorts of different ones. So good. I, you know, I just, um, and, and Fletch and Patty used to talk about this, but I'm reminded of the scripture. It's like one plants, another waters, yeah. but God brings the increase. Yeah, exactly. And I just know that these guys, they planted this church and yes. we watered it. But yes. God has brought increase both in yeah. those days and since then, just people yeah. coming yeah. And, and lives transformed because yeah. of God. It's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. One, one of the other amazing things that happened during the green building days was when we launched our Shine Community it's Care. It's true. It was the same weekend, wasn't it, when we had yeah. Pastor Phil come and do the the building opening. Yes. Then the next morning with the mayor and all these dignitaries, we launched yeah. Shine, so, yeah. which has been a big part of our church ever since. Yes, and as a result, um, you know, God's added m more people and people um, getting involved with Shine too. And we did awesome. remember some of the things we did there with the um, fixing the cars for but single mums. The single mum car day, <laughs> backyard blitzes, so many great things. And Margaret Appleton's done a great job leading our yes. Shine yes. community care. Absolutely. Love that. Hero. Oh, I think that would have to be one of, yeah, the Christmas hampers, you know, just people in need in our local community and being able to 
um, mobilise a team of people that can go out and help people that are in need or who are not as well off as we are and take a Christmas hamper. I've done it myself. Like, it's take powerful, this it? massive loaded hamper with all these all this food and presents and take so it into good. a family who is expecting nothing, expecting, yeah. you know, just a jam sandwich for Christmas yeah. lunch. And they're blown away. And it just makes such a difference for the church to be a representative of God yeah. and bring that love in. I, I love that. It would be a, a highlight for me. It's a beautiful thing. It's a so reputation good. we have on the Sunshine Coast as yeah. a church who loves yes. the community. So yeah. it's yes. really so good. Yeah, and speaking of awesome people, um, Ken and Margaret came during those those green building times, didn't you guys? A prayer. And uh, we've got a little video from them as well. Oh, Great. Awesome. Well, we moved from Rockhampton to the sunny coast 13 years ago. And we pulled up in Main Drive because there were a lot of people going into a green building there, and we were blown away by a steward coming and opening our car door. Nobody had ever opened our car door for us before. And then, then it started, the journey started. And we found this church with a vision, a vision for salvations and for transformed lives, a vision for the future, a vision with people being uh, learning more about God and coming to know God. Fun, amazing fun and yep. friends. Oh, wonderful food. And, oh. and food. <laughs> and, and it, what they did in the community was just amazing and it touched my heart for Shine. Right from those early days, every time Shine was mentioned, my heart started beating. And we were absolutely delighted to have fantastic preaching. Oh, amazing leadership. And we could see the leaders were really anointed. Yes, to and, closer and, to God. And being challenged to actually step out. Yes. And, and start to be moved out of our comfort zone. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Hall of Famers, Love Ken and Margaret guys. Appleton. Yeah. Isn't that cool. lovely? That's brilliant. We've just had so many exciting things happening. Have you been enjoying this? Yeah, yeah. well, I remember too that um, we started Oscars. So we would uh, have these great big celebrations uh -huh. to honour our volunteers because right. we value volunteers right. so much, yes, don't we? Academy Awards, yes. and this is where the Hall of Fame the kicked yeah. off. That was Neil um, and of Sue's, our first Hall of Famers. Presenting to to um, teams uh, of different people and individuals. Yes. And um, I mean, it's something that we are so grateful for. This church right. wouldn't exist without a team, team. Yep. of volunteers. Oh, and nice. Ken oh, and Myva. Ken and Myva. Yes, Christine. And nice. Christine. Oh, no. yep. um, I mean, really, we're so grateful for all yep. our volunteers. Exactly. We know there's so many people here That's that Taylor. have um, you, given given years and years and so their time and their energy and their skills and yes. their um, um, resources and prayed. And we're just so thankful for everybody. Why don't you give yourself a big clap? Come on. Because Every, our volunteers, our team, yep. dream team. The dream team. The makes dream it, team. Makes our church. Teamwork makes the dream work. For everybody who set up a chair, you know, looked after a baby, <laughs> prayed during the week, <laughs> sent out a newsletter, or done some administration, or made phone calls, run a connect group, yes. just loved people here in our church. This is our party and celebration. And although we do, we, we kind of get a little bit of the spotlight today, but it's really about our church. It's our birthday. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're yes. so proud of the yeah. church, hey, yeah, and the, the willing volunteers and so spirit much. that's here. It's beautiful. So true. Well, it was only a few years we were in the green building, a very short few years, as we we're just bursting at the seams. Yes. And then as a church, we took on a huge faith step a huge of faith committing step. to a space five times larger and yes. probably ten times more expensive. Yeah, yeah was, I think it was seven times more yes, rent. More it rent. was the big step yeah. to go from wow. the green building to wow. this vacant that's, building. Oh. Wow. This was that's Shell. that's what it looked like. That's, <laughs> Empty uh, auditorium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just began again by faith because this we know no other way except when God speaks we step out and we take ridiculous. I think Russ used to say this bite off more than you can chew and chew like crazy. Yeah, so that's, that's what we did. 
That's it. We bit oh. off more than we could chew and we began. We'd been in the green building two and a half years. Yeah, two and a half years. We thought we'd get the other half of the green building, but it just wouldn't have been big enough. So God led us to this place. Out. And we just, again, the same thing. We started to meet here. We started the fit out here. Um, again, just we closed our ears to workplace health and safety issues. At this point, we're all above board these <laughs> back days. Then. But yeah. back then, it wasn't <laughs> such a big deal. Uh, we did get sent back to the green building after about four weeks because we didn't have a council thing ticked. So we got that sorted. Wow. Um, and, and that's just, why we needed a business manager. Yeah, we did. Like that was, I was, yeah, <laughs> that's when Margaret stepped up four days a week volunteering to be the business manager for the next many years. So she was supposed to be retired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh. And Chris Bringle came and it was always, there's always cakes and parties and things. But, but what really happened is we got this vision to, because we, we were stretching for the rent, as we couldn't afford a big fit out. And so we just asked for volunteers and, and people got involved and, you know, spouses of members of our church began to fit out the building. I remember Mick Hickman coming along and helping with all the electricals and the air con and someone who didn't come to our church, uh, we gave our air con in the green building to the people who moved in. They heard about that. A Christian businessman gave us $80,000 worth of electrical gear here. We just had miracle after miracle. The council wiped about $500,000 of fees. So what would have been about $2 million for this whole fit out and process ended up being about $450,000. And it was a massive stretch even to do that and the, and the rent. But God was faithful and the church was so, you were so generous, so faithful. It was an amazing time, eh? In one of the earlier photos there, we saw a picture of Dave Walters. Dave Walters. He got saved in the church yeah. too. Yeah, yes. yeah. Brought the along by Mark Dave and Dave Walters, yep. Oh. And he and did an amazing He, he built a lot of this by his hand full tears. time and was a, yes. a wonderful man of God. I, I was just thinking of, so of Mick, um, you know, he didn't get saved for ages. He held out. Where are you, Mick? Give us, you're here somewhere, I saw you. He's already setting up somewhere else where, all right. But I remember um, Fletch coming here about 10 years ago, and, and Mick's wife said, all right, just come one more time. If you come this this Sunday to hear the founder, I'll never invite you back again. You don't have to ever. And he's like, too good to be true. I'll come once, and I never have to get asked again. And he came, and he got saved, and he, has no, he hasn't stopped coming ever since. And it's people like Mick that are, are just heroes in our church, just heroes. Awesome. What, yeah, that's awesome. What about the story of Jim Carr? And we were, oh, that's a brilliant story. That is an amazing story. Do you want to share uh, that? Yeah, remember that. We're up the front here, and, yeah. and Sarah, who looked after our events, we're all praying for our friends. And in this moment of praying for our friends, she's like, oh, I was praying for my cousin Jim. And yeah, she came up and told the yeah, story. She, she, she got up on the stage, she was so excited, and he just texted me to say, I want to come to church. And we were <laughs> like, awesome, I'm praying. And, and then suddenly he didn't find out where her church was, but in the middle of her telling the story about, the, about, <laughs> Uh, I got this text, he wants to come to church. The back door's open. It's like slow-mo. The back door's open. Yeah. He comes through. She goes, there he is. That's my cousin. Oh, and he walks into church. Oh, and they, you know, the chariots of fire music started to play. They ran towards each other. A big hug. And uh, radically, I got saved. Yeah. And then his wife got yeah. saved. Their kids. Oh, and oh, I think they're probably in the creche church. today, are they, right now? Looking after yeah. all the yeah. creche kids. Just amazing people, right? That was so a great good one, moment. Moment. Yes. Such a great so it moment. took us a couple of years to get the building looking half decent so yes. we could do an official opening. Yes. And yeah, then we exactly. had Pastor Phil come it up did. and do that opening. He came in and did that? a live did that painting, painting up the back there. Which is hanging on the back wall there. And he did this um, on a night service. And so many people Places came for us to, out. oh, finally we could celebrate. This is the building that God's given us and it's completely That's fitted complete. out. Yeah, exactly. We that could took a long celebrate time. that moment, 2009. Mm. Yeah, wow. Well, with that 2009, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. It's been just such an incredible journey and I'm sure you've got some highlights and we, you know, can we just hear some of your highlights sure. over these years? Sure. I look, for, for me, I think the, the, amount, the amount of people who have met Jesus here yeah. is the, the highlight. You know, we're about Transform Lives yeah. and we've seen so many people from the early days right through uh, come and just radically have their lives changed. Many, of, many are in the church. Many, we travel a bit and we'll be in this place and there's so-and-so yeah. who got saved in Canberra or in Brisbane or in the Gold Coast. Or, they're all over the place, people who got saved in our church, it's, it's quite remarkable. So that, that would be, for me, the, the greatest highlight, that sense of transformed lives we have. Oh, absolutely. It's people yeah. like 
Jim, yeah. that mm-hmm. comes in, that he gets saved, his wife gets saved, all of his kids are now in church. Right. They're yes. part of, they're serving, they've yes. done Bible college and pathways and, you know, they invite people to church and it's like yes. whole families that come in and that get God. saved and it's not just a moment, it's for their future right. and for people around them and, and just looking around, there's so many people that have yeah. been, um, had that salvation exactly. experience and seen that transformation. It's like, that is a, a, the highlight yeah. of so, all the years yeah. of it's yeah. just like every salvation well, moment yeah. is a yeah. highlight for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Seeing lives transformed. We're, we've got some photos. I mean, we began our Bible college officially, so this is one of the great things that started in the last 10 years, our official college, our interns have kicked off. So there's just a great sense of yeah, things young that leaders you always in dream church. about. Yeah, young leaders One day rising we'll have up that. real strong. One day we'll have a thriving youth ministry and yep. now we see hundreds of kids meet at our yep. stadium nights yep. or yes. our youth come camps on, and it's just like, oh, such a great this job. is like that dream come true. This is youth camp this year, earlier this year. It's wow. just like these pumping wow. young people just on Good fire. Night. It's so cool. Oh, so true. I did actually see that we had the all night of prayer. And yes. just what I really love that, that the, the <laughs> culture is of prayer. Right. And you guys yeah. are such great examples Thank of that. Look how many people but that turned was out. Incri- that's that's a night of prayer. prayer. That was a whole all night. night of prayer. That was until the morning. Last year. That was incredible. Uh, so many people involved. <laughs> but it was at midnight. That was at midnight. Who wants to do that again? Who reckons we should do an all night of prayer? It's not about wanting to. Yeah, all seven of you. That's awesome. <laughs> um, just the sense of family yes. that we have. Yeah. You know, yes. we, just like we are a church family, and some yep. people have great families, some don't. They feel isolated, but part of a church family. We come in, and so many uncles and aunties yes. and brothers and sisters and babies grandmas. And, yeah, hold up each other's babies, and through um, the seasons of life, we've just got. Um, just uh, such a sense of family in it. Your car. But what Come about on, nine, three, um, when we had a proposal oh, on this stage? Is a, this is a favourite oh, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is Felinga and Beck. <laughs> when Felinga proposed to Beck on stage. He, he sang a song. He sang a song. We made some excuse to get Beck up here. Felinga was so nervous on a Sunday night. And he was like on the worship team. And so he sang a love song <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? What's going on? And then he gets down on his knees and proposes. Oh, that was and so she cool. said yes in front of us all. <laughs> now so they're married, good. got a little baby, yeah. and that's the sort of thing we celebrate. It's family. It's just so, family much, yes. so much of that. That's symbolic, isn't it, of so many just moments and grandparents and great-grandparents yes. and grandkids and uncles and aunties. Yes. It's, it's such generations a Generations in yeah. the church. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Like Julie Townsend, there's four generations in the church. How good is I think that? We're, oh, we're up to four too. You You're know, up to like, four, exactly. Yeah, Russell's mum, yeah. she gave her heart to the Lord. Yeah. and yeah. yeah, it's just so wonderful. Wonderful to see see that, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Such oh. a great sense of family, and just such committed people. Like honestly, that would for, for us the sense of of people who are bought into the vision of our church, who are bought into to what God's doing in this place and, and passionate about it, passionate about praying, passionate about worship. You know, so we, we feel that and sense that. And we pinch ourselves, don't we? Like, it's such a privilege to yeah. lead such a, a dedicated group of people. So yeah. we really, that that's such a highlight for us. Yeah. It's so good to just stop and reflect on Isn't the it? 25 yeah. years yeah. and just all God has done. And just to see today, it's just like, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. The pu- pushing through, the fighting, the all-night yeah. prayer, the fasting yeah. all even. The, all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even fasting, yes. <laughs> oh, you two are just absolutely amazing. Thank oh, you. And thank just you. so thank you for all that you have put in. But, uh, you know, I feel like we're just, we're just kind of grown up a little bit, right. 25, 25 years. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we've got so adults. many more exciting yeah. years ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you guys looking forward to? For the future. Oh, wow. Great question. Uh, apart from lunch today. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. lunch will be Her awesome. Lunch was great. <laughs> oh, look, honestly, uh, it feels like you know when we were worshiping at the start of the meeting, and just there's such a sense of celebration and what God's doing. I, I in in that moment, I I try and live in the moment, but I also have a habit of living in the future. And and in that moment, I'm I'm actually imagining our building opening. Our, our, that, that wow. we own, and I'm, awesome. I'm just seeing, you know, seats and seats and seats, and and again, 
again, that feeling of people going, well, I was there in the premier years. I got there in the, the green building years. Oh, you know, and it's like what we think now is, is the latest phase. It's just going to be another, it's another level of foundation yes. that's gone in. And I, so yes. for me, I just, I, I feel like, and at the start of the year, we had this sense of God said, it's not just a new page, but it's a new chapter in the life of our church. Oh, I feel like that's where we are right now. Yes. I feel like we're, we're embarking on the most exciting journey of faith again. Yes. It's like we're going again in yes. faith uh, to see yes. miraculous things happen with facilities. But facilities are usually just a doorway to reaching more people. Exactly. And that's really what it's all about. A yes. greater level of the miraculous and the power of God. Delighted that we're going to Power Road. I, we join in the power years. I think we'll look Woo. back and say that. Yes. The power years. <laughs> and so a greater sense of the miraculous, a greater level of people getting born again in our yes. church. I think we're going to go into a season of, of multiplication of sites and multi-site for our church uh, yeah. so that we're not just here in one location but Come we're up to on, 10 different yes. locations around around the place so I kind of sense those those things that's kind of the things I get excited that's awesome. about yeah. I, I get excited just hearing you yeah it's me so too. great it's I such just faith. you know that scripture that our church was founded on he will make it glorious by the way to the yes. sea and just there's so many more people on the Sunshine Coast that need God right. and that we'll never stop we'll never that's stop right. until our, our church is just full to overflowing right. wherever of uh, as long as there's one person exactly. not saved on the sunshine, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep growing Holy. and just ke- make his name known come among on. the peoples and wherever that is and seeing lives transform, yeah, whether on. it's here expanding, multi-site, yeah. Yeah. making his name known among peoples. And I'm excited. That's awesome. I'm excited the about it. blue oh, baptism absolutely. tank. Come yeah, on, yeah, lots of people. We can just sit here uh, yeah. for the next oh, half hour damn. watching all the baptism photos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Watching all the people yes. whose lives have been. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But oh, we love your faith. We love your yes. love for us. We absolutely love you. Let's just stand up and just thank them right now. Yeah. We just give them just a little bit of appreciation. You're the best, pastors. We so appreciate you. It's all about the lives transformed. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. I love... Ah, it's such a privilege. It's such a privilege. I I, I think we should just take a moment before we go any further. Why don't you just grab your seat just for a moment?